PayPal. Um, I just want to point out I look really good today. You're welcome. I haven't gotten ready like this in a while. So I went, I went for it. Okay. Okay. Also, just a quick reminder, subscribe to my channel. So this video is going to be talking about, I, I guess, my December TBR. Like, I, I don't know. It's kind of the end of year struggle to complete my Goodreads challenge time, you know? Um, I am two books behind. <laughs> I have eight books still needing to be read to reach my 50 books for the year, which was only decided because I reached 12 books very quickly. So that's where, that's where I'm at right now, you know, like um, trying to figure out how I can squeeze in eight books into what, like five weeks, because I'm filming this 26th of November, so like, okay hun. Sure. So we all know I've been reading Gossip Girl. So this is the second book. Um, I basically took a month off of reading because I just, my brain couldn't do it. Been doing NaNoWriMo month and I've just not been able to sit and read a fucking book, basically. So I've, I did like my first reading stream the other week and I'm like a bit over halfway through. I did some more reading this morning. So I'm going to try and maybe fit it into my schedule again. I used to read like first thing in the morning, last thing at night, like for a very solid period of time during lockdown. So I'm going to try and do that. Um, I'm going to try and do some reading streams in December as well as my gaming streams I wanted to do to just get through it together, you know, get through it together. Um, I currently have, so that would bring my number down to seven books. Um, when I finish that one. I have one, two, three, four, five Gossip Girl books here. I have one that's lost in the post that was supposed to turn up early November and is still just not here so I don't know but it's a bit further down the line so I will at least be able to read a few of the Gossip Girl books. <laughs> um, I also sort of said that because they're relatively short they all are roughly like 220-ish pages long, or they're a short book, like this one's just randomly a different size. But I think I should be able to read them relatively quickly or easily as well because they're not... literary books, basically. <laughs> you know, they're 2000s YA, um, and I have been really enjoying them, which is shock considering I had a very traumatic experience trying to read 2000s YA. You can go watch that video because I'm... <laughs> I refuse to relive that anymore. <laughs> if I manage to do that, that'll be what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Can I count? Six, yeah. Six, maybe seven books. So that still leaves one or two books I still need to read to complete my Goodreads challenge. So I do have a couple of other options. One's a book I did start. Oh, there's a few books I have started but just didn't finish that I could possibly try to finish. So one of those is, is here. Generation Dead. It was a reread that I was trying to do because I haven't read this literally since I was... God, how old would I have been? I have no idea. Maybe 15? Somewhere between 15 and 17. So like 10 years since I read this book. Um, I remember like quite a bit of the plot, um, just not a lot about specifics, which is kind of what I like when I reread books. I tend to try and leave books long enough that I basically just don't remember <laughs> much, if any, of the plot. So I can kind of re-experience the first read, if you get me. Um, but I mean, obviously things come back to me as I read, but it's still almost as if I've never read 
the book before, you know. So this is about um, um, a zombie virus that only affects teenagers. And like when I read this, this was before I knew I was disabled. So I feel like for me personally, it'd be, it might be quite a nice book to reflect on like disability issues because it it does talk a lot about making adjustments for these students who are undead um like they walk slower so they're allowed to leave class early to get to their next class on time you know like small things like that that i would just really like to talk about in relation to real life and you know like if we can make up a bunch of shit for some fucking fake zombies why can't we do that in like real life for real disabled people you know so it's a ya teen kind of love story i thought it was from the point of view like girl main character i forgot her fucking name phoebe um but it seems to be like a multi-point of view book which i don't i didn't remember that happening um but not only is it a multi-point of view book it's kind of just like it's an uneven multi-point of view um and also with like people you don't expect to be in the point of view of you know there's like the main group of friends the main character phoebe that the whole plot line revolves around you get her point of view yes there's her best friend adam you get his point of view sometimes um there's one of adam's like football friends you get his point of view and he's a fucking asshole so i don't know like it's similar to that that's kind of how gossip girl works that it just fucking switches point of view left right and fucking center um which goes against like literally everything i was <laughs> i was taught in my degree but it also reading these older books kind of makes me realize like hey that's why i wanted to write like that because my work in progress that i've been working on in nanowai month originally started out as like a massive multi-point of view book amongst this group of friends of like eight people um which is insane like i would just put that out there that's insane um you can't get everybody's stories basically but yeah reading these old ya books made me realize oh okay maybe that's why i thought that that was doable and a good idea <laughs> so now my book is just one singular point of view because I want to write diversity, I want to have, you know, characters that reflect real life, real people, but I also don't want to step over the line and start telling stories that are not mine. Um, I have enough of my own stories to tell. <laughs> Fucking disabled, chronically ill, queer, non-binary, trans, motherfucker, mentally ill, learning, disabled, neurodiverse, you know? I have a lot of stories that <laughs> off my own. <laughs> I don't need to steal other people's stories but like it was just interesting having been picking up these older books that have this kind of crazy chaotic multi-point of view storytelling style and being like oh okay we really do write what we we know <laughs> what we read and I think like even though these books are pretty iconic especially like the Gossip Girl ones I really think it's a little bit lazy in the writing but that's something that I found in lots of books I read is that they cut a lot of corners and just it does sometimes make the storytelling suffer I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about how did I get here maybe I do have ADHD do I I need help somebody where what the fuck I don't know how to get out of this hole what am I doing reading goals anyway well <clears throat> fucking hell um yeah this is a book that i did start barely it was okay this is one of my options of books i could f maybe f maybe finish but it is a bigger book it's like 400 pages but it's not a difficult writing style to read so i think that could be a possibility i also have still got a half read a graphic history i'm just gonna get my fucking good reads up that would have been a good idea stupid queer a graphic history i got like nearly 50 percent through i mean it's a graphic novel about queer history feminism queer theory things like that it's 
supposed to be like a dummy's guide but i it's still very challenging i won't lie um but it is something that maybe i could finish this year trying to reach this goal the other book that i haven't started but i you know it's the last book in the series um now quick note i've owned the series for many years i have not <laughs> been buying any recently nothing to do with harry potter recently um i have just been reading them this year because i wanted to be able to give my own personal feedback um as a creative writing bachelor's degree graduate and a queer trans disabled person um i do have one video talking about the first two books you can go and watch that leave a comment there if you would like to see me continue because i can i just haven't it's mental illness in it like honestly the trauma of talking about that as a situation and some of the comments that people give me on it is not fun there you go um i said this in my reading stream that basically um i associate harry potter with christmas quite a lot most christmas times christmas holidays i will watch some of the harry potter films if not all of them um even if i'm not like actively watching them i will sit and have them on in the background whilst i do other things to me that's just kind of always been a christmas thing it's always on sky like i'm pretty sure there's a fucking harry potter channel around christmas that just that just plays harry potter <laughs> films uh, if not all year round, I can't really remember. I haven't watched them in a while. So as we near Christmas, I think that reading the last Harry Potter book might be a book I can like devour qu pretty quickly because of that association to the time of year. Uh. Um, and I won't lie, like I've been trying to do things a little differently this year. I, I'm not normally like a Christmas person. I'm not religious not in an organised religious way anyway. Christmas for me is just about, if I can, giving presents to friends and family and showing them that I care about them and that I think of them and I know them. But otherwise I don't like Christmas very much, don't really care about the decorations or any anything else like that. You know, I've been, I, I was vegetarian for 10 years so like Christmas dinner has kind of been shite, to be honest. Not that I ever really cared about Christmas dinner before anyway either. You know, most most Christmases I just kind of eat a lot of shit, get get drunk, uh, and open presents, and just sit in pajamas in the evening. <laughs> so twenty twenty has been bad for everyone. So I've been putting the effort in of trying to be a bit more Christmassy, or like, like prepare myself to be more Christmassy. Um, I have been exchanging dresses with a lot of my friends so i can send them christmas cards with like little bits in them and then a few friends i'm sending actual presents to as well and i've been trying to buy presents for my family um which you know hard there were other things but i just my brain has just done that thing where it just forgets everything that i have done and thought about in my entire life yeah i've just been trying to create a christmasy atmosphere and feeling of enjoyment around this time because this year has sucked and I think that reading Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows might help me continue that sort of sense of like safety because it's it's just like a franchise that has always meant a lot to me um, as I was growing up um, and if anything it almost means more to me now that I'm an adult and have read it and seen um, how terrible the author is but also seen things in the writing that I didn't see before and even though they were not, you know, they're not done in the nicest or best way, they have changed a lot of my thoughts and perspectives on everything. It's been a comfort reading Harry Potter through 2020, I won't lie. Um, and I think that it that's a feeling that I think I will need um, and appreciate at Christmas, you know. So that's it. That's why it's on there. Then I've finished the series. Um, and I'll be open to discussing them at my whim or will or what the fuck ever, I don't know. So that's a general gist of things. I'm going to try and make a December schedule. My brain. 
I've also got my weekly videos, my weekly blog posts. I want to schedule in reading streams uh, and Twitch uh, video game streams. So hopefully by the time this video goes up, I've done that. I think it might be, I'll put the picture here. So pause and take a screenshot, take some notes. Um, I'll post it around my social media as well. So you can kind of know in advance what to expect when but yeah I just kind of want to keep myself busy try and wrap this year up I've got a few social media following goals I'm still trying to reach so I think the ones I'm still trying to reach are Instagram Twitter Facebook and no yeah that's it I think Facebook Instagram Twitter is that it Really? Okay. Well, I mean, follow my other social media. I have a blog that you can follow too. As I mentioned, I post there weekly as much as I can. Follow my Twitch to get notified when I stream. I mean, I do post elsewhere I, when I start to stream on there, but I don't know. Follow. <laughs> anyway, that's kind of just it. Uh, it's been a bit, this went a bit everywhere because my brain cannot focus on one thing and stay there or it just focuses on the wrong thing so there we go uh leave a like on this video comment down below let me know what's on your december tbr i guess you know share some vibes let me know if you're you know want to join me for some of my reading streams that'd be sick um and subscribe to my channel it means a lot to me when people subscribe um i do a little happy dance like genuinely, every time I see I've got a new subscriber, I get like a rush of warmth in my body. It means a lot to me, I promise. <laughs> I make videos every week. I talk about disabled chronic illness stuff, books and queer trans shit, you know, like here we are. And often a combination of any of those. So if any of that interests you, come back, subscribe, and you get to see my face. Um, and I'll see you next week. Bye.